We do begin with breaking news tonight. Just east of Springfield, a shooting at a home in this area. Let me just give you perspective. This is 65, and this is Chestnut. Here's the area we're talking about right here. It's near the intersection of Hackberry and Story. Of course, the other big story of the night is the rain that's happening throughout the day, happening overnight tonight, and the flooding that's coming as a result. There's the radar. It's still coming. The problem has come at night, and a lot of the criticism coming now is about how the police are handling these protesters after dark coming in over the last couple of nights with tear gas uh, to, to get the crowds to back away with uh, SWAT military style vehicles all things that are not going over well in the grand scheme of things in the public eye certainly with the protesters and that's what the governor talked about today Lisa this is where the murderous rampage took place Texas County in the end seven people were shot to death before the shooter 36 year old Joseph Aldridge killed himself his 74 year old mother was also found dead but apparently of natural causes and many are speculating including the county coroner that that mother his mother's death may have actually been the thing that sparked his rampage. Tonight we learned that uh, he pleaded guilty, Joseph Aldridge pleaded guilty in 2008 to federal gun charges and was released in 2010. There are six crime scenes scattered around here, five of them within three square miles of the small town of Tyrone, where only about 50 people live. Four of them are houses where seven people were murdered. One survivor was wounded, and she is in the hospital tonight, expected, we're told, to survive. Another is the home where Aldridge's mother died. And the final crime scene was a truck on Highway WW where Aldridge killed himself. Here's what we know tonight about the victims. Police have released the names of four of those victims. 52-year-old Gerald Aldridge and his wife, 47-year-old Julie Aldridge, and then 50-year-old Harold Aldridge and his wife, 48-year-old Janelle Aldridge. They are cousins to the killer, Joseph Aldridge. Police have not yet confirmed the names of the three other victims. More shocking news in the Ozarks to start this day. This time, a targeted rampage in tiny Tyrone in Texas County. A juvenile female caller indicated that she was in the residence and apparently had heard gunshots. Uh, she immediately fled to a neighbor's house to notify authorities and responding deputies found two deceased persons at this residence. Uh, she was shaking and crying and bleeding and it was just awful. The victims murdered there were husband and wife. In second and third houses, deputies found two other married couples shot to death. A young boy apparently slept through one of the attacks and was not hurt. At a fourth house, police discovered another man shot to death, his wife also shot, but clinging to life and expected to survive. A gruesome, unprecedented path of carnage. Crime like this in any community is pretty major. So it's, uh, you know, it's not something we're used to seeing. Seven hours after the first call came in, police found the shooter dead from a self-inflicted gunshot wound in nearby Shannon County. The shooter is identified as Joseph Jesse Aldridge, age 36, of Tyrone, Missouri. The coroner believes the gunman finding his mother dead is what set him off. Even so, everybody is wondering why he targeted the people he did. It's so painful to um, absorb because I know these families. And police tell us the woman who was shot and survived actually was able to give them good information about what happened, who the shooter was, uh, before she was taken to the hospital uh, where she is currently recovering. As we mentioned, Tyrone is a small town. Only about 50 people live there. So a crime of this magnitude, as you would imagine, is devastating to the people who live there. And news travels very fast. It's very uh, especially devastating to the people who knew and loved the victims. And in a town like that, there are a lot of those people. We talked with one of those people today, a man who was friends with one of the victims. Of course, reeling from this uh, horrible news last night, the murder of seven people. Uh, in a town of 50, so nine deaths out of the 50 residents happened just last night. That's almost a fifth. KY3's Eric Hilt is in Tyrone tonight where he's been talking with residents.
Eric Hilt live tonight in Tyrone, which is just about 20 miles or so from where we are tonight in Houston, which is the county seat, and that's where the Justice Center is, where the sheriff and the Highway Patrol have been uh, having press conferences throughout the day. KY3's Mike Landis is here now, and you've been talking to the folks around Houston, and this is something that, that nobody's ever seen. No, and positive come out of this that that's even possible with this. Well, that may come down the road. Right now, it's awfully tough. And we heard the sheriff say earlier today that it's a, we're in a different time. You have to lock doors now, and you have to be aware and uh, and be careful because this sort of thing believe it or not can happen it happens right. thanks Thank Mike. of course there are many questions tonight why did this happen what sparked it what prompted it why were the people who were killed targeted they clear they appeared to be very clearly targeted for these killings uh, we won't know any of those answers until tomorrow at the earliest police are going to uh, have more press conferences we expect tomorrow we may learn the names of the three other victims uh, and they say that the, the the way that they're going to get to the bottom of this is by asking a lot of questions. They're going to be talking to uh, family and friends of the victims of the killer to find out what happened. Why did it happen? And if you're wondering about all the crime lately, you, you have good reason to be disturbed because these murders continue a staggering wave of murders and murder suicides in the Ozarks of late. Consider this. Just since February 12th, we have reported on 24 people being killed in murders or murder suicides in the Ozarks. That's 24 people dead in the last 15 days. Lisa, just to give you a sense of where we are uh, related to that quick trip, everybody knows the quick trip that was looted and burned down. That's just about half a mile down the road that way. And it's right outside there this evening that a very large crowd gathered early on. It was probably at 6 o'clock or so that people started streaming from neighborhoods all around here, walking to that area. And they gathered there in what appeared to be, and it was surprising to us, uh, a celebration. The mood was very festive there. Uh, take a look at some of the video we have tonight. People uh, were excited uh, to be out there, they say, because uh, there's a different police strategy to d in dealing with them. They're reacting positively to today's new strategy of how police are dealing with the protesters. And the Highway Patrol, of course, took over Ferguson Street and are going with a decidedly different approach, letting demonstrators gather even, yes, after dark, and get things off their chest, if you will, while police keep the body armor clad cops and the military style vehicles and the tear gas in the back as backup only to come out if needed on the front lines. And it seems that is a welcome change for the demonstrators I talked with. No guns pointed at us. No Strategy is, uh, involves a change of leadership in the people who are in charge of this post-shooting Ferguson situation. Uh, and it's a man in charge at the helm now with the Missouri Highway Patrol that, in the words of a lot of the people I talked to from Ferguson tonight, looks like we do. Ferguson is uh, predominantly black. This new man uh, for the Highway Patrol is an African-American. In fact, he's from this area. His name is Captain Ron Johnson. And Governor Nixon is hoping the new leadership and the new strategy will really pay off and ease tensions. So earlier today, President Obama voiced concerns about how the Ferguson Police Department and St. Louis County, who had been in charge of uh, the post-shooting situation here, have been handling protesters and people following the shooting of Michael Brown. So there is a new strategy, a new man in charge here. It will be interesting to see now that darkness has fallen and the, the, the midnight hour approaches, uh, how that strategy works tonight and in the coming days. Of course. Uh, police have not been uh, exaggerating the danger out here. The danger has been very real. The, the QT was looted and burned down. Other stores have been looted. Shots have been ringing out. Uh, there are pictures taken of people in the crowd with Molotov cocktails that they're trying to light and throw at police. So there is a real danger out here. A woman driving by was shot in the head as she drove her car by. There is a real danger out here for police, so they're trying to figure out what the line is there that they can walk between being too much of a police presence and inciting the people, according to uh, what the governor thinks and what Senator McCaskill thinks, uh, or not having enough police presence and thereby 
letting get things get out of control. Tonight's the first night of a new strategy. We're watching it, we're monitoring things, and we will continue to do so through the evening. Well, as dead as the crowd was here at Bush Stadium Saturday night for the game, the crowd was that alive and then some for last night's game. What an incredible game. The Cardinals take the lead, the Giants tie it up, the Giants take the lead, the Cardinals tie it up and take the lead, the Giants tie it up again in the ninth, and then the Cardinals win on that walk-off home run from Colton Wong, one of four Springfield Cardinals, former Springfield Cardinals, to hit home runs in this game. Huge and so exciting for the folks in Springfield to see the players that have come through the double-A system there hit those huge home runs, one of them being the walk-off winner from Colton Wong. We talked with fans outside afterward. They were ecstatic, as you can imagine. Woo! It was amazing! Woo! Those fans got their money's worth last night at Bush Stadium. What a game that was. One for the history books for the St. Louis Cardinals. Now the series basically turns into a best of five. It's tied at 1-1. The next three games will be played in San Francisco. Problem for the Cardinals is that Yadier Molina strained an oblique muscle. We don't know exactly what that means for the series, but he will likely be out at least one game. We should know more about that later today. Whoa, what a game. It's been an exciting time here in St. Louis. The series tied 1-1, heading to San Francisco. In St. Louis, Ethan Forehats, KY3 News. I actually saw the drop stop on Shark Tank back when it was on a year or two ago, and I thought it was a fantastic idea. So when I saw it in the store, I had to grab one. Watch how easily it goes in. Yeah. Lisa. Really? That's what happens when you read the instructions. Have I've always hated the space between the console and the car seat because stuff just falls down there. Foods, pins, paperwork, credit cards, everything. And once it gets down there, everything's dirty down there. And it's so difficult to clean it out. That's where the drop stop comes in. Uh, when it comes to pluses and minuses, I just have uh, pluses. It works. And it works well. And it's easy, Lisa. Once you put it in place, you just leave it there. Set it and forget it, if you will. Also, it's black, so it just blends in with the car. It looks like the black space that's always there. So I'm a fan. Gets rid of a long-standing problem. I actually gave these for Christmas a couple of years ago. Really? Yeah. I like them. I tell you, I, every time I put that on there, I had a hard time getting it on. And I can threaten the kids with it. it oh. Don't make me come back there. because Yeah, it won't bruise it. Hit, and hey. it doesn't leave a mark. Like that? <laughs> A week long. I used it to mop my floors, which is, I got to tell you, something I don't do on a regular basis. Is that right? Uh -huh. so you make Sarah do that. Well, she does it for me. I don't make oh, her. You're teaching the children. <laughs> so I was anticipating it to be a real pain. Fortunately, it wasn't. Let me tell you about my pluses and minuses. First, the pluses. It was easy to put together and to use. Also, and entertain the kids, uh, the spinner part worked great, I have to tell you. All you have to do is step on the pedal and as much water spun out as I wanted to spin uh -huh. out. I controlled yeah. it. It was nice. The other times I've mopped floors, I had to use my hands to wring out the mop. So this is much better. Sarah seemed to like it as well. As for the minuses, I honestly didn't notice a difference in results. Uh, the floor You're didn't kidding. sparkle or shine more than any other time I've ever mopped. So for me, it all comes down to ease of use. And yes, it was easy to use. You couldn't tell a difference? No.